to start recording. All right, everybody. So thanks again. Uh, my name is Nicole Riley. I'm the Director of Annual Giving and Alumni Engagement here at Rockford University. And I am actually coming to you tonight from our Johnson Alumni Center, very warm and cozy by the fire here. Um, some of you might recognize this as the Lion's Den from your days on campus. So we're hoping that, you know, when we can be back in person that you'd be stopping by to see us um, soon in the future when it's safe to again. We certainly miss having the building full with alumni and students here. So we're so glad though that you're all joining us tonight and are grateful that we can continue the tradition in this way. I want to thank our alumni hosts, Tom and Linda Sanquist, class of 1985, as well as our electronic resources library and archivist, Joanna Mladic, our president, Fulkemer, who is joining us on the event tonight, and then also VP for Advancement, Stephen Cole, and Lauren Perkle, our development and alumni engagement assistant for all making this event possible tonight. We know it's been a different year for sure, but we're just glad we can all be together in this way. Uh, so just a little bit on the program before I hand it over to President Polkemer. Uh, we'll start with a few words from Dr. Polkemer, um, from our host Tom and Linda, before handing it over to Joanna for her holiday history presentation. Um, after her presentation, we'll have time for Q&A, but you can also utilize the chat box to um, note your questions throughout the event. After that, we'll move to selecting our favorite ornaments to start off our decorating of the tree here in the Johnson Alumni Center. Um, and then we'll have time to catch up as a group. So at this point, I'd like to throw it over to President Fulkemer to take it over. Great, well, thank you, Nicole, and welcome everyone. It's very nice to see your faces. Uh, those of you who are able to be on video, thank you for uh, having your videos on. Uh, Grace, I see you're decorating your Christmas tree. That's wonderful, well, that's, that's great. Um, I'm joining you today from, from my office in the third floor of Burpee. And uh, this is, this is a, a fun event. This is the fourth uh, year that we have uh, brought this event back and, and Linda and Tom will talk about that and the, the revitalization of this event. Uh, but the last three have been in person and have been held in the Johnson Alumni Center. But this time we're, we're meeting virtually. And one of the benefits of meeting virtually is that you don't have to if you're far away, you don't have to drive to campus in order to participate in this event. So uh, from wherever you're joining us, thank you uh, very much. <clears throat> I thought I might just say a word or two about the semester that we've just uh, completed. Um, this has been the most unusual semester in our 173 plus year history um, in, in that we uh, did things uh, very, very differently, but very safely. Um, so back in the summer, as we were thinking about what we would do, we were waiting for guidance from the state of Illinois about whether we could be fully in person, whether we could have our residence halls open, what things would look like in the dining hall, what things would look like with student activities, athletics, et cetera. Um, and in the early part of the summer, we did learn that we would be able to be in person and we, made, we moved forward with that plan. Um, and we developed lots of safety protocols uh, to keep our campus community safe. Uh, our faculty worked on developing um, a curricular plan of how they were going to teach their courses. Uh, many courses were taught in a hybrid fashion where sometimes the students were in person, sometimes the persons or the, the class was online. Uh, some classes were taught totally online and some classes were taught totally in person. Um, and when we started out the semester, we didn't know where things would end up. And uh, in fact, most of us, many of us thought that, that there would be some interruption at some time during the semester, and we'd have to go back to fully online like we did uh, in the spring. But thankfully, I can report that we made it through the entire semester. We uh, finished our classes this past Tuesday, uh, so before Thanksgiving. Our students are taking their finals right now and they're taking those virtually um, through online. So the finals week is this week and our faculty are busy uh, giving finals and grading final papers and, and tests and exams. So uh, things have uh, gone well. Um, our, our campus community uh, made it through uh, with flying colors. Uh, most, most of our meetings have been like this virtually. We just had a faculty meeting about an hour ago uh, our final faculty meeting of the semester and we met via Zoom and we were able to do all of the necessary business that the faculty must do uh, via Zoom. Almost all of our committee meetings, our board of trustees meetings uh, have used this platform and it's uh, what, a, 
what a blessing it is to have something like Zoom available to us. I was thinking about if this had happened 20 years ago, what would we have done? Um, what, what could we have done in order to continue uh, the business continuity? But we've been able to do that and we've been able to serve students. Um, I think one, one other thing I would share about the semester is that you know, we didn't know what enrollment would look like this fall. Um, after a spring semester of uh, online courses, after a group of high school seniors who didn't get to participate in all of their normal traditions, what that might look like, what they would decide, whether they would take a gap year, whether they would uh, do something else. Um, and so we plan for all kinds of different scenarios for what the fall <coughs> semester might look like from an enrollment perspective. And lo and behold, our enrollment grew significantly uh, from last fall to this fall. Our overall headcount is up uh, 50 students. Our graduate programs are up. Our traditional undergraduate program is up. Our first year class, those coming directly out of high school was up almost 40%. So there was some great, great growth. Um, and I think part of it was that students wanted to have uh, an in-person experience and knowing that we were gonna do our very best to keep an in-person learning and living uh, environment here uh, attracted new students as well as kept our continuing students engaged. And so it was a very good, very unusual semester. Um, the spring we're planning for a very similar approach. Um, we don't think things will change much uh, in the early part of the spring, unfortunately. Uh, one change that we do plan for in spring is that um, we do expect to have some athletic contests uh, with some rigorous testing, but we'll see how that plays out. Uh, and we're hopeful that by the fall, um, if everything that I'm hearing from, uh, from the federal, state, and local governments is true, that uh, things will be back to something of at le least seeming a little bit more normal um, by the fall semester. So your alma mater, uh, those of you who are alumni, is, is strong. Our enrollment is strong. Um, there's, there was a good sense of accomplishment this fall as we were able to uh, get through a semester and, and have a very successful uh, set of classes and activities. So again, I'm very glad that we can gather together tonight, even if it's virtual. I look forward to next year, hopefully being able to gather back in the Johnson Alumni Center and to be able to participate in person. I want to extend to each of you my very best holiday wishes. Um, from all of us at Rockford University, we hope that you have a wonderful holiday season. This is the very beginning of it. My wife and I were talking this morning before I left to come to campus about how busy this time of year is usually for us with, with events. We host generally host a reception at our home, multiple receptions, and of course there are events here on campus and there are really no in-person holiday events this year. So it's a very different year. So, uh, but we're very glad that we can at least keep some of the traditions alive like this. Well, now I wanna to transition to the hanging of the greens uh, portion of the event. And I, I wanna introduce a wonderful couple who are hosting tonight and who brought this tradition back to life. This is our fourth year uh, of doing it with uh, the Sandquist as hosts. They were already introduced. Linda is a Rockford University trustee and she's also the Vice President of the United Way of the Rock River Valley. Her husband, Tom, is an attorney and partner with Williams McCarthy. So Linda and Tom, I will turn it over to you to uh, make some remarks, tell us any, tell us any stories you wanna tell, uh, and then we'll uh, transition to Joanna. Well, I'm gonna let Linda do most of the talking. Uh, thanks everybody for showing up. Nice to see some familiar faces. Um, a lot of familiar faces. And, and uh, the fact that we are hosts is really more of an accident than anything. Um, you know, we just, we just, uh, we're sort of chosen by the fickle finger of fate, as I used to say on Laugh End. And I'm going to let, uh, let Linda tell the story. Uh, well, and I want to echo <clears throat> Tom and, and say how nice it is to see everybody. I think we actually have a bigger crowd virtually than we do in person. <laughs> so. So maybe this is the way to go. Um, Tom and I um, met at Rockford College and, and got married a year after we both graduated in 85. And we were living in Rockford and I had a one-year-old and kind of wanted to get um, involved in some community activities and somehow got connected to some women at Rockford College 
who were carrying on the tradition of hanging of the greens, hanging of the greens. And Joanna, I don't know if you're going to correct anything that I say. So this, because this is all just legend, right? This is the urban myth about hanging of the greens. But it, it used to take place at the old campus. I know a couple of years ago, there was a gentleman there who said that he did not live on campus, but he was one of the first male students and he helped decorate um, the old campus so that when the girls got up, the young women, they were surprised that the campus had been transformed magically and decorated for Christmas. So these were some older women who did have ties back to the um, old campus and they used to decorate specifically the stage in Clark Arts Center so that when they had concerts there in December, it was all decorated. So I got connected with them, took my one-year-old baby who probably had a scooter or something on the stage and, and we decorated and it was really fun and did that for several years. And um, then one summer, Mary Lou Waldine, who was kind of one of the ringleaders of this group showed up at my door and said that she had cancer and that the prognosis was not good. And she had four or five boxes of Christmas ornaments from Hanging of the Greens that belonged to Rockford College. And she did not trust the administration there at the time and did not want those ornaments to be stored at Rockford College. So I became the, uh, the keeper of these ornaments and they sat actually in our hallway closet for 20 years and Tom kept saying, are you going to do anything with those ornaments? Are you going to do anything with those ornaments? And I, you know, so that I would be like Mary and Mary Lou did die and I'm like, Mary Lou is it time? And I just didn't feel like it was time. And I think it was probably four or five years ago that um, President Fulcomer became president at Rockford, what, what's now Rockford University. And we had several conversations and, and I think, I hope he thinks so, hit it off. We enjoy his company. I think he enjoys ours. And all of, and it just kind of dawned on me that maybe now was the time to bring back the ornaments to the college. So I told President Fulcomer about um, what had happened in Mary Lou's wishes. And we kind of made a little agreement that they probably, the ornament should come back to campus. What happened later that year then is that Tom and I were out walking our daughter's dog on campus on our anniversary and they had just had a reception in Johnson Center, the alumni group did, um, and the development group had just had a reception and they invited us in, dog and all, plied us with wine and cheese and crackers. We told the story of the ornaments there and the next week we brought everything back and that's kind of how the reimagined hanging of the greens happened and because we just said yes we'll be glad to host i'm not exactly sure that it it draws people but we are always feel very very honored to be telling the story um, of the ornaments of mary lou waldine and these fine women from the old campus and very happy that the tradition gets to live on. So that is the urban myth <laughs> about hanging of the greens and, and we're really glad that all of you are here with us tonight. So oh, with that, I will introduce, oh, is there a comment? I wanted to tell you, I'm one of the old ladies from the old campus and it was a tradition that the freshmen would stay up late and decorate. So in the morning then when everybody else came down, it would be decorated. And, and that was from in basically in Middle Hall, which was kind of the gathering part where everybody came in to check in. If you, you know, when you came in late, you had to sign in. So that was the main uh, part that they decorated. Oh, and I think and that's it, wonderful. And I think when we were, and maybe <clears throat> Deb, you know, I think that there was some hanging of the green something that went on when we were there in the early eighties. Well, in the old campus? No, um, Deb Bogan is on and, and yes. he was there and Katie, I'm thinking that there was something going on there then. Yes, it was, as Katie said in the chat, it was done, the freshmen did the hanging of the greens. Yeah. In, in, 80, in the 1979 to 83 when I was there. Okay. Yes. Yes, so I was gonna say, I was there. 70, uh, 76 to 79, and we did Hanging of the Greens. And then I came 
my mother did it at Middle Hall. She was Grace Mean and McMullen. Mm -hmm. I did it on the new campus. And then I came back and did it uh, with my daughter. And she graduated. Um, so that was in the 2000s. So it, it has been, it, and it was fun to do it. That's three generations that have been able to do it then. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, hi. I was in those transition years between the old campus and the new campus. So my first Christmases were on the old campus and the Green Kong and Middle Hall. But then we were all um, transitioned to the new campus by the time my senior year, except science labs. And I was a science major, but that's a whole other story. That, um, in 1980, um, I had the pleasure of watching their romance, Tom and Linda, unfold. And I wanted to add that as a beautiful concept because immediately when they first started sort of getting to know each other, we all said they're gonna get married and they did. Um, so they're a lovely couple. And I just wanted to add the thanks to that. And we did do the Hanging of the Greens in 1980. Um, I was vice president of my class and I was just sort of thrown uh, this assignment and Arlen Eisenbrandt, who was a magician who was out and about in the United States. He is a graduate of Rockford College. He actually went and illegally chopped down a tree somewhere we don't know where. And he put it in one of the halls across from, um, I believe, um, Burpee Center. And we decorated like heck. We got parents to donate and then we kind of hinted to the next class to do it. Funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Joanna, now you need to tell us the true story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will try. <laughs> um, and a lot of it, um, as we'll see um, as we talk about this, um, is, is really rooted in, in our our early history. Um, so thank you, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us tonight um, for this presentation entitled Hanging of the Greens, the Rockford University Holiday Traditions. My name is Joanna Maladic, and I'm the Electronic Resources Librarian and Archivist here at Rockford University. And I'm very pleased to be here with you tonight um, and to share more information about the holiday traditions and Hanging of the Greens at Rockford University. During the course of tonight's agenda, we'll discuss some of the following topics. Please feel free to ask questions or share stories during the presentation. Nicole will also be monitoring the chat, as she mentioned, if you place any questions or comments there. There's also time reserved at the end for questions and discussion, and I'm really looking forward to hearing more of the stories um, that we just got to hear a little bit about. So the earliest traditions of Rockford Female Seminary and then Rockford College aren't always the best documented. Um, the annual publication of yearbooks did not begin until 1903, and the student newspaper, The Purple Parrot, as it was first known, was not published until 1920. So prior to those yearbooks and student newspapers, students recorded their memories of holiday traditions in their literary magazine publications. They use satire and humor frequently in their publications, and I'll share a few examples in a moment. This publication is still in existence today. And in December of 1984, the Rockford Collegian highlighted that the Thanksgiving holiday had already taken place and that, quote, we who were fortunate enough to go home for Thanksgiving need not waste our energies in sympathizing with those who stayed at the college. There seems to have been a good many boxes sent to the girls, and the result was as many spreads, end quote. Even students who are unable to make the trip home were thought of um, during this time of the holidays. And as students do today, there was also concern about finishing up the semester with final projects and exams before returning home for the holiday break. The students also shared their ideas of how they thought the end of the semester should go. One quoted, everyone is feeling the extra strain which marks the end of each term. For examinations, we still have, and no small amount of trouble they are to us. We cherish the idea that Rockford College is not a conservative institution, but its progress has not yet reached the point when it has seemed best, from some points of view, to abolish examinations. From the standpoint of the students, 
the proper time for that reform arrived long years ago. But unfortunately for the student, the powers that be do not see it in that light. It's interesting to see how things, some things don't actually change. On the right is an image of the Rockford Collegian where these quotes originated from. But in the midst of all of this hustle and bustle of finishing up the semester, students also took the time to begin celebrating the holidays with their friends and faculty. A Christmas exhibition was held on the last Friday or Saturday evening of the semester. Students brought articles and fancy work to the senior parlors to sell. Popcorn was sold for five cents a bag and a fee of five cents was charged for admission. The proceeds were donated to a benevolent purpose and students were able to support Hall House, the City Hospital, and the City Aid Society with their donations. The Christmas Vesper service was also a part of the holiday tradition at then Rockford College. In December 1907, the students hosted the first Christmas prom, which continued as a tradition until the 1940s. The photograph on the right is an image of Sil Jim and Middle Hall decorated for the promenade. Evergreens, poppies, and pink lights decorated the gym, and Gibbler's Orchestra provided the music for the evening. During the same holiday season, the Tolo Club, which was formed in 1902 and is the equivalent of our Student Activities Board today, provided Thanksgiving dinners for 18 families and put a telephone in the YWCA building. The Tolo Club also gave a Christmas tree and ornaments to the boys of the Winnebago Farm School. They provided each child with a watch and pair of skates and all the candy and nuts they could eat. On the slide is an image from the Christmas prom on December 9th, 1911. The, Chris the freshman class was so large that year that they had to limit the guest list to upperclassmen only. The ceiling and walls are covered in lilies and shaded lights to create a warm glow. The orchestra was partially hidden in the room to make it appear that the music was flowing from the flowers. In 1917, the Social Service Club was organized with 50 inaugural members. One of their first projects was to send Christmas comfort bags to French soldiers serving in World War I. They also hosted a Christmas party for the members of the boys club and their younger sisters. There was a large electrically lit Christmas tree and each child received gifts and candy. In 1921, the Glee Club hosted its first Christmas chapel service since previously the Christmas Vesper service was not hosted by any particular club. This tradition continued for many years as part of the Glee Club. Ice skating was also a part of the holidays and it was first mentioned in 1921. Students, as you can see on the right side of your screen, they actually shoveled snow off of old campus and afterwards the Rockford Fire Department flooded the ground to create a rink. Unfortunately, the fire department was unable to recreate the rink after the holiday break because of a water shortage. Instead, students skated on the Rock River located just down the hill from campus. The first official hanging of the greens used as the term for decorating the campus for Christmas was on December 10th, 1943 in the student newspapers, the Purple Parrot and the Vanguard. There was an annual wassail party which uh, replaced the Christmas prom followed by a dance. There was a committee in charge of decorations that was quote, doing it up green, end quote. There was no formal dance held during wartime in 1944 However, the student newspapers mentioned decorations throughout Old Campus. The Glee Club also presented its annual Christmas Vespers and the student newspaper article pictured on the screen um, highlighted that it was the traditional high point of RC's holiday festivities. In 1947-1948, the first mention of the freshmen serenading the upperclassmen with carols appeared in the student newspapers. They also decorated campus with the fragrance of fresh pines. In 1949, the freshmen gathered in Middle Hall to participate in Hanging of the Greens. On the right is an image of the Rabble Rouser, dated December 18, 1957, which includes the recipe for the traditional wassail enjoyed during the holiday season. 
This is one of my favorite images from the archives of some of the decorations that were put on campus from December of 1945 and students actually getting to meet Santa on old campus. During Mary Ashby Cheek's presidency, it was also customary for students to go on a skiing trip with her to Michigan during the holidays. Skiing and sledding were also holiday traditions enjoyed on old campus and can be seen in the photograph on the slide. The students pictured include Joan Hildebrand, Miriam Anderson, Marjorie Berry, Beverly Marshall, Margaret Stanton, Gloria Henderson, and Dolores Anderson. On this slide is an image of a holiday card from 1955 depicting students participating in the hanging of the greens traditions. Watch for our weekly throwback Thursdays this month for this and other holiday cards used throughout the years. The 1966-1967 student handbook mentioned the hanging of the greens as a tradition with the following statement. Quote, the freshman hanging of the greens is an early morning project to decorate the college in the spirit of Christmas, end quote. By 1998, the student handbook indicated that all students, not just freshmen, were involved with decorating the buildings for the holidays. Hanging of the greens was the traditional start of the holiday season. The image on this slide shows new campus covered in snow in 1966, an idyllic start to the holiday season. Many of these traditions begun before 1900 continue to the present day, although perhaps this year they may look a little bit different. They continue to be dear to our Rockford University community and will always be a way to ring in the holiday season. The Vocal Collective hosts an annual Christmas concert, the Hanging of the Greens and the Wassel Party continue, and we've also added a few new traditions as well, including lighting the tree outside Burpee, the care committee's employee Christmas party, and the president's holiday open house, to name a few. Thank you for your attention this evening. I appreciate everyone joining us. At this time, I'd like to open it up to questions and discussion, and pl please feel free to share your favorite memories of the holidays at Rockford University. Thank you so much, Joanna. That was fabulous. I know I learned a lot. <laughs> appreciate it. We didn't have any questions come through the chat box during the presentation, but if anybody would like to ask a question, um, if you'd either like to raise your hand or you can unmute yourself as well. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I'm sorry. <laughs> didn't get Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, didn't mean to jump in front of you. Um, I was only at Rockford College for the last two years of my uh, undergraduate degree. Uh, but it was in the 50s, uh, 58 and 59. And so I guess actually my first Christmas there would have been 57. And at that point, um, the highlight of hanging of the greens was the wassail. So apparently, although it had not been around as a, a permanent thing very long, um, it was already known to be great. And I just wanted to add, I still make wassail every Christmas and I share it with my family when I have family here. Uh, I share it with my coworkers. I'm really looking forward to doing it this Christmas because I will actually get to see one of my co-workers on the week right before Christmas this year because um, we'll be working together on a project. So um, looking forward to sharing Rockford College Wassel with another group of people. That makes us so happy to hear that. Is anybody on the call drinking Wassel right now? <laughs> Great, thanks so much for sharing, Ruth. It's so good to hear from you. Are there any other memories or, oh, Grace, I see your hand up. Feel free to join in here. I was gonna say, we're not drinking wassail tonight, but after graduating from Rockford College, my husband, who was also an alum, we moved back to his hometown in New York. And then we started a tradition of having a wassail at the first Saturday of December. And we basically invited the whole town to come to our apartment, uh, okay. 
and did that for, that was, uh, we had done that for 30 years before he passed away. My daughter met her husband at Rockford College and they now continue the tradition up here in Wisconsin of the first Saturday in December, they have the wassail and we use the same Rockford College recipe. Uh, okay, this year they're doing it a little different. It'll be a drive-by event. Uh, okay, but that recipe we've been using since, for our family since 79. Fantastic. My very, very my memory of Wassel and Rockford College tradition was the breaking of the punch bowls because they served it in glass punch bowls on big banquet tables in Middle Hall. And as the supply in the bowl got less, of course the Wassel was cooling off and someone would come from the kitchen with a big vat of hot Wassel and pour it into the, into the bowl. And at least once every holiday season, you could count on a wash of Wassel across the table and onto the floor. And cleaning up wassail on the floor must have been an awful, awful chore. <laughs> oh no, I haven't seen that happen yet here on campus. So it must have changed the, <laughs> the way that we <laughs> serve it. The That's one, too plastic funny. ones now. <laughs> too good. Thanks for sharing. If there aren't any other questions or any other, oh, I see a hand. Marcy, I can unmute you here. One moment. I, I got it. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say that. Um, so I graduated in '92, and uh, so we were doing the hanging of the greens my freshman year in 1988 for sure. And one of my favorite memories is we had uh, decided that there were certain statues on campus, one in particular, uh, where the gentleman needed some more clothing, and so we hung the greens very strategically that year. And I truly hope that that was not what killed the tradition in future years. <laughs> Uh, we have not um, had wassail. Uh, I had it once or twice when I was on campus, but I was very happy to introduce it to my family tonight. My husband and my kids are all watching tonight. And so uh, thank you for sharing all these traditions with us. You all have some fun stories. I like hearing these. <laughs> We're all glad you enjoyed your time at Rockford College, Rockford University. So I think now, and be patient with us as we try this for the first time. We're excited to do this. Um, so Lauren is here with me. I'm gonna mask up as we get ready to put the first ornaments on the tree here. So we actually have, we have a display of ornaments with numbers that correspond. Um, so I will ask President Folkemer to um, carry us off with our first ornament. Um, we will shift the camera view here so you all can see the tree and see the ornaments. And then as you pick a number, I will read the corresponding information for the, the ornament that we have on file um, and we will place it on the tree. So uh, we're excited to do this. I'm going to switch the camera view here. And President Fulkemer, if you'd like to unmute here, we will get ready so you can pick the first ornament. Okay, I'm unmuted. Switch camera, all right. Can you see the choices there okay? Well, yeah, let me let me change the view. It's like a game show. <laughs> oh, I see them now, yes, okay. Perfect. So I pick a number? Yep, you can pick any number. Okay, um, I'll pick number three. Number all right, great choice. So I will hold this closer to the camera for everybody to see. So this ornament was donated in 1978 um, by Mrs. Bernard Benson, uh, Marilyn Volley, class of 1949 from Rockford, Illinois. So as you can see, um, this is actually a leaded glass candle with holly around the base and was made in the Philippines. So good choice. Great. So I think one of the things um, that we didn't explain that in this big collection of ornaments, apparently during the 70s, um, somebody, a, a group of people from Rockford College had sent out letters to all of the alum asking them to donate an ornament and why it was meaningful to them. So all of those ornaments have little silver tags on them that have a number on it. And there's a corresponding index card 
that is hand typed because everything was typed then. And it has um, the alum's name and address. And then if they had said why it was special to them, it has that explanation on it. And I think one of the things, the 70s does not seem that far away, at least it doesn't for me. But I think one of the really interesting things is that all of the women's names are Mrs husband's name, last name. So if I had donated one, it would say Mrs. Thomas Sanquist. And, and that just shows you how far we've come. And like I said, late seventies does not seem that far away, but it's really interesting to see the cards and to understand um, what was meaningful to people and, and what they chose to send in. So that's a reason in future years to come to campus for Hanging of the Greens and to see all of these cards and all of the ornaments. Yes, definitely. Linda and Tom, would you like to actually pick our next ornament? A little trouble seeing them, but I will say, <laughs> I'll say number four, because it looks big. Number four, excellent. Let me grab the card for number four. Here is number four here. So um, this is actually an ornament donated from a member of the class of 1915. So you picked a great one here. Um, it looks like it was given in 1980 um, by Mrs. Warren Gibbs, um, Irene Peterson. And it is a circular styrofoam model with Santa and a deer sitting in the middle. Great choice. All right, we'll go over this way. All right, Joanna, would you like to pick our next ornament? Sure. Um, how about, is that number 14 at the bottom? Number 14? Yep. All right. So this one has a little bit longer description here. So this ornament was given in 1978 from Mrs. Yoshio Harada, Hiko Habu, class of 1958. So it's a ball with design created by colored threads of white, purple, red, orange, pink, blue, and gold tassels of yellow. A note from the donor of the ornament it is my great joy to send you an ornament to be hung on the alumni tree. The ball I am sending is called Goten Mari in Japanese, a palace ball. It was used to be played with by children before Western balls were made of rubber and came to Japan. I'm not quite sure why this is especially called a palace ball, but I presume that the ball was a toy for princesses at a palace for quite a long while. These days we use it for decoration. The string is put on that for its purpose. Excellent choice. There we go. Now we'd like to open it if there's anybody else that would like to pick an ornament. Please feel free to shout out a number. We'll get it on the tree. And you're also welcome to share more memories at this point as well, if you would like, or ask any questions. I'll pick 11. It looks 11? big too, and it's green. <laughs> so. I love reading the history of, history of these. So for number 11, also have to be very careful with these. So for number 11, it was given in 1978 from Mr. and Mrs. Joseph K. Brin. Dorothy May Anderson is the alum, class of 1930. It is an off-white glass ball with colored wax flowers and gold lace design that was made in Western Germany. So this one's pretty neat because these are actually made of wax here. Wow. So. Cool. Any well, I, wish, I, I was just gonna say, I wish when I went to Rockford College, they didn't do hanging of the greens. That was, I graduated in 87. And I at least did not hear of anything. I may have missed something, but I have a feeling that was a time when it did not occur. So 
I've enjoyed the last few years though, going to the Johnson Center and uh, seeing Tom and Linda and everyone there. So I'm glad that you're continuing it, even though we can't go there and hopefully next year we can. For sure. Thanks. Definitely look forward to when we can all be back in person, that's for sure. But yeah. it's fun doing this virtually and making the most of everything. Yeah. Great, thank you. We have any other takers for the ornaments here? What about number 12? Number 12. Excellent. Let me grab the card as well. Oh. All right. This one actually has a pretty short description. So um, actually class of 1926 donated by Mrs. Herman Ossendorf on behalf of Muriel Walker. Um, and it was given in 1978. So this is a red and white knitted stocking with a candy roll in it. And if we have any other takers, we can get the next ornaments ready. I would love to see number nine. Number nine. I do feel like I'm hosting a little bit of a game show here. <laughs> All right, this is a beautiful one, very intricate. So this was given in 1979 by Mrs. Lawrence Braden on behalf of Helen McGrath, class of 1926. It's an egg-shaped ornament decorated with gold braid and velvet ribbon, purple sequins, small gold balls, three at each end, and a white egg. And this was actually handmade, so it's pretty cool. That takes a lot of talent. I know, Lauren, I think you should probably pick one since you get to be the camera. Number 13. All right, Lauren's been dying for us to tell you more about this one. This one has kind of a fun story. All right, so this was donated in 78 by Mrs. Joel Blahnik for Mary Ann Jarman class of 1962. The description is it's a twisted cone of straw with the note, with apologies for its late arrival, may I express my delight in being able to be part of yet another RC tradition. Of all the ornaments I considered, this was the easiest to mail. It does have significance for my relationship with the college. It was purchased in Sweden, Christmas 1960, during my unforgettable junior year abroad. The straw of which it is made is symbolic, of course, of our Lord's humble birth in the staple. I do wish I could participate in the festivities in person, but my husband is involved in a grand concert with 250 students in recognition of the 50th anniversary of the Nas National Council of Christians and Jews. Pretty cool, intricate ornament there as well. And Marianne Jarman, who's, in whose honor it was given, was very active at the college when I was there. She was one of the student leaders. That's a very familiar name. We have plenty more ornaments um, from Nicole, where these came from. Yeah. Nicole, you have a request. Grace has a request six. for six. For number six. Okay. Let me grab number six's card. This is a beautiful one as well. And there are so many more of these. Like Linda said, if you are able to come in person when we're able to host next, there are so many beautiful ornaments to go through and, and learn about. So this was given in 1978 by Mrs. Upton Bartlett, uh, Patricia, Patricia Price, class of 1930. Um, the description is a green and gold silk embroidered bird with purple trim made in Taiwan, Republic of China. I'll need a ladder to get those up higher for the rest of the tree. I'd like to see number two, please. Number two, that's a great choice as well. So this one's interesting. I think this may be one of our ornaments donated from our earliest alumnas that we have on, on record for these ornaments. So um, 
Mrs. Homer Johnson, uh, Hortensi Elder, class of 1904. So this was given in 1979. Um, there were actually two ceramic angels, one lavender and gold, one blue, green and white. So this is um, the second of those two. There's a request for number one, Nicole. Number one, okay. Thanks, Joanna. All right, this one has a pretty short and sweet description. So given in 1978 from Nancy Beagley, class of 1965. The description is Crystal Star from Boda, Sweden. My spacing is looking okay. All right, we have four ornaments left. Should we just go for the rest of them? All right, I'm gonna grab ornament number eight. So this one's kind of fun. Uh, this was given in 1978 from Mr. and Mrs. Scott Fuller, Lori Johnson, classes of 1975 and 1976. Uh, this is actually a Santa Claus made from a corn cob, painted red with white cotton beard, hat brim and tassel, and very expressive eyes. A note from the donor is that this ornament was made by Scott and Lori from a popcorn cob grown in their garden in 1978. get to the last three here. I'm going to grab their cards. All right, I'll just read the last three off and then I'll put them all up so everybody can have time to catch up. So ornament number seven here is very pretty. It was donated in 78 by Miss Virginia Ross Swan, class of 1931. It's a green sequin and bead Christmas tree. Her note, I am giving a new ornament to start a beautiful new tradition. It was made by a handicapped person in Southern Wisconsin, sold through the Village Craftsman, a store just for um, working for handicapped individuals. I wish to congratulate Mary Lou Carter Walden for sending such a nice letter and the green sheet of instructions and wassail recipe. It contained a note of real friendliness, seldom found these days in letters of this kind. If someone else did it, please pass on my compliment. And then for ornament number 10 here. We have donated in 78 uh, by Mrs. Paul Erickson. Um, description is a Christmas tree of grains and pine codes in shades of brown and it was purchased in California. And then for our last one here, we have this very nice wreath. Not hanging of the greens if there's an almost ornament accident, right? <laughs> Luckily, this one is very sturdy. So our last ornament here was given in 1979 by Mr. and Mrs. Craig Best, Rhonda Cheney. Craig was class of 1974 and Rhonda class of 1973. It's a silver colored metal ornament um, of a wreath donated by the two of them. So those are all the ornaments we pulled for tonight, but we'll continue to decorate the tree so it's nice and full. Um, and we'll send an updated picture out to everybody so you can see the final product of all the ornaments on the tree. So thank you everybody for joining us in this tradition. I'd like to open it up if you have any memories um, you'd like to share before the conclusion of the event. Thank you for doing this. Um, one of the really positive things about the pandemic has been that people have been so creative about using virtual meetings to enable those of us who 
would not otherwise get there to have a part in the hanging of the greens, for example. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Ruth. It's definitely been a silver lining of all this is finding out different ways to do things and how we can still come together when we're not together in person. So we're really appreciative that this is a positive result of you know everything going on and to feel that togetherness, especially right now and in the midst of everything happening and the holidays coming up is, is really, really nice. So thank you. And thanks everybody for spending your evening with us. Nicole? Yeah. Nicole, why don't you have everybody introduce themselves and say where, yeah. what class year they are and where they're from and uh, so forth. That'd be great. Definitely. So I'm just going to go across the tiles here. So next um, would be Kelly James. Hi, I'm sharing the screen here with my sweetheart. We're both alums from Rockford College, Rockford University right. now. So this is Ray and Kelly James. Um, my my graduation year is the class of 95. Mine's 92. So I know we saw Marcy there a second ago. Uh, I'm also, we're also currently employed with the, with the college or the university. Um, I'm the university library director and... Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm adjunct uh, teaching history. And we're just kind of tickled that this is happening. We, I was doing hot chocolate this evening, but um, I always appreciate the events. And this is wonderful that we can kind of uh, change it up a little bit and be in these gatherings on a Zoom format. So I'm very pleased that we could join you tonight. Thanks so much. Arlene, would you like to go next? Oops, sorry, Arlene, I'll unmute you. There we go. Um, my maiden name was Muren. I'm Arlene. Arlene Muren Kriska from the class of 1960. And my husband, uh, Lee, was also in the class of 60. He's passed away a couple years ago. And um, our, the special thing about our class is that that was the year that um, the college became co-ed. So um, I was the last student government president and we had to work with the men's college and come up with a constitution. And so it was a special time for, for all of us. That's it. That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing more of your story. Ryan, would you like to go? I'm Ryan Cushing, class of 2011, and I'm joining from the basement of the library here at Rockford University because I'm also the IT director. Yes, thanks, Ryan, to you and your team for all your help with these Zoom events and making sure we're successful. <laughs> all right, Catherine, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Kate uh, Schill and uh, Henry Schill, class of uh, 1980 and 84. And um, I loved Rockford College and I'm calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Much warmer weather there for sure. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Ruth, would you like to go? Okay. Um, yeah, I was class of 59. And actually, uh, that earlier comment from Ms. Crisco reminds me, uh, I was an officer of the women's student body in 59. And we were meeting for the first time with the men from the men's college to get ready for that year of actually being a joint uh, co-educational institution. Interesting times those were. Um, what was your maiden name, Ruth? Pardon? What was your maiden name? Kurtzwell. Oh. Kurtzweil. Oh. So, oh. Uh, yeah, I was treasurer, I think, in 59 of the women's and then I will, to con continue uh, my introduction, I'm living in Houston now. Um, 
So I wouldn't have been able to come to the Hanging of the Greens this year. Uh, so I'm really glad that we had this opportunity to do it this way. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. It's good to see you again. I know you joined us for some of our earlier virtual events. So thanks for, for joining us again. Patty, would you like to go next? Sure, I did mention it before. I graduated uh, in 1987 and I was already married and kind of went back to school. So I, I'm actually graduated from high school in 74. So I was a part-time student. I didn't get the opportunity to live on campus and I am currently a trustee and I have learned so much more about the university now and college then um, and looking at it from a different perspective. But I am so proud of the fact that we've grown into an amazing place that just seems to be doing so many things right. Um, and um, it's so interesting to hear. I really almost wish I could go back in time and be a part of it back in the 40s, 50s and 60s because it just seems like it would have been, um, I don't know, a breath of fresh air, so to speak. It just seems like it would have been really nice. So thank you all for sharing your memories. It, uh, it's exciting and interesting. So continue on, I guess. <laughs> thank you, Patty. Uh -huh. Grace, I know you introduced a little bit earlier too, but would you like to go? If there's anything you'd like to add? Sure. I was gonna say my mother was actually class of 45 and my, sorry, my clock is chiming. <laughs> uh, my aunt was class of 50. Uh, okay, so uh, I don't know if there's anybody that that overlaps with. I'm trying to listen to the numbers. Then I was class of 79, my brother class of 87, my husband class of 78, and then my daughter and son-in-law uh, in 2008 and 2010. So, uh, okay, real family tradition. Pretty amazing, that's awesome. Thanks, Grace. Deborah? I unmuted. Can you hear me? Um, great. My name is Deborah Bogan Fedor. Um, I graduated in the class of 1979 and um, I'm living in Loveland, Colorado. Um, my family is from Evanston, Illinois originally and I went to college at Rockford College and I remember a few of the people that are on here. I've had some interesting things happen and some, re some interesting reconnections back to Illinois and to Rockford with family and events. And uh, one of those was joining the Daughters of the American Revolution. And interestingly enough, the reconnection back to Rockford College is that some of the people who were part of that Fort Dearborn chapter that I'm now a member of actually graduated from Rockford College and specifically Catherine Waugh McCulloch and um, Jane Adams and Frances Willard did not go to, to Rockford College, but many of the women at the time did. And it was a real privilege to learn that these people who were original members of Rockford College had such a huge history in that area and did so much for women at that time. And to be able to be a graduate of Rockford College and now a member of an organization like the Daughters of the American Revolution, it's a really interesting connection and I'm quite proud of the fact that I have a degree from Rockford College. Um, I also had a chance a couple of years ago to go back uh, to Illinois and attend an RSO, Rockford Symphony Orchestra program and reconnect with Tom and Linda, which was very delightful. And to attend a performance that a friend of our family's who's a musician was able to produce and perform. And it was really a privilege to be there, to see them, to visit the campus again. I hadn't been there for a long time and um, I really love the opportunity to be here tonight and relive some of these old traditions and see some faces that I remember. So thank you for doing this. I'm delighted to be here and to have my reconnections back to Illinois and Colorado and look forward to coming back again soon. Graduated in 79, I don't know, if, or no, graduated in 83, if I didn't mention that. But thank you again, this has been a really delightful event. 
thanks so much for sharing and we're glad you were able to make it back to campus at that point and, and have those reconnections again. Um, and I will add too, if you all are ever interested, you know, we're here to help um, keep you connected and we're always open to helping host virtual events for class reunions online or anything like that. So thanks so much, Deborah. And Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer Smith. I'm MBA class of 2014 and a transplant to Rockford. I moved to Rockford in 2012 and started my MBA that same year. So Rockford University, it was college when I started and university when I graduated. And it really was um, such a great way to get to know the community really well. Um, I really give a lot of credit to the college now university for um, sort of indoctrinating me to all things Rockford, which I love and still live in Rockford with my husband. We're so glad. Thanks for sharing. I wish, I think Liz was on earlier. I don't know. I don't know that she is anymore. Um, but she always said we should um, trademark the phrase Rockford Colliversity on a t-shirt for those <laughs> yeah. who got to experience. To cross both. it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Marcy and Michael? Hi, Ed. This is Marcy Tate, class of 92. I'm here with my husband, Michael, uh, who did not go to the university, but he's learned a lot about it. Um, I was uh, very active when I was on campus. I was active in the Alumni Association for many years, and I currently serve on the Board of Trustees. So it's great to, to see everybody and hear these stories. I did do some research in the archives before, and uh, so I always love to hear more about the archives and the Purple Parrot. Thank you. Yes, I learned that tonight. That was the first time I had heard of the purple parrot. So I'm, I'm excited to, to know that now. Stephen, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name's Stephen Cole. I'm the uh, vice president for advancement here and a uh, not an alum, but I will be because I just enrolled in the MBA program. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. And Tanya. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tanya Southwood, class of 1965. And coming to Rockford College was a real eye-opening, world-opening experience. And our class was one of the ones who helped clear the new campus and plant trees and take out the barbed wire and finally haul a ton of boxes. <laughs> and that was really exciting. Um, I have a lot of fond memories of Rockford College. And thanks for this. It's enjoyable. That's so neat to hear. I love to hear the stories of the transition from old campus to this campus and, and perspective from that time. So these are the stories that we love to hear. This is what Rockford University is about. So it really just warms our heart to hear all of your experiences and, and how Rockford College or University has influenced your lives. So. We hope you'll continue to keep an eye out. We'll have plenty of events moving forward. We'll stay virtually um, until it's safe again to do so in person. Um, but we'll always incorporate these virtual events into our, our yearly um, plan here because it's important to, to all stay connected and provide opportunities like this that allow us to connect from all over. So uh, we just wish you the best this holiday season and, and hope everybody stays safe and, and healthy. Um, and again, if we could ever provide any support to you please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're, we're definitely happy and here to help. So thank you, Joanna, Tom and Linda and President Fulcomer again. And thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank happy you. holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And we'll send out this recording and follow up in, in the photo as well. So thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye.